We've lost something in our culture. I remember reading a, a story on Celine Dion, the, the famous, famous singer. Uh, a large French-Canadian Roman Catholic family. And he said her dad, her father, at the dinner table would go around every evening and lay his hands upon each child and pray over them. Wow, there are some things we have to recapture. Right now, I'm delighted to welcome uh, a young clergyman, the rector of St. George's Anglican Burlington. His name is Ray David Glenn. Welcome, Ray David. Thank you, David. Good to be here with you. I know your background. Yeah. <laughs> when I was 10 and 11, your grandpa, mm. after the Second World War, came home from Europe, and on the government dollar, mm. he went to something called Ansley College, where my dad was your the father. principal. That's right. And I remember your dad as a little boy coming in, because my mother was teaching your grandpa piano. Mm. My mother had a degree from McGill in piano and so on, and she was teaching. And uh, all the little Glens came, and that was your dad, Ray, <laughs> right. who ended up being chairman of our board for a period of yes. time. Yes. And the story goes on from there. I mean, uh, when I was um, working here, doing, hosting a morning program called Rise and Shine, I then met my late wife, Rhonda. Um, we were married in the chapel just around the corner in this building by you again. And you know, I married your mom and dad. You married my marriage. mom and dad before that. Uh, when our church moved out of our historic building up the road here, we moved our congregation right into the chapel here at the Crossroads Center. And so, David, the journey of God's providence and care for me and for my family and for our congregation has been provided in a lot of ways by you and your ministry in Crossroads. So and thank you. you've got your permits from the city of Burlington. You're That's building right. a new church building. We are. And uh, uh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, you know, uh, I, I, Burlington Post, uh, there were letters from people saying, we've got enough churches, you know. Right. Because in some churches, they've got, you know, six elderly ladies because they have turned away from the historical proclamation of the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Well, that's true. And, and, and so there is room. But nobody decided to amalgamate and give you the other building. <laughs> no, you know? so, no one did. So you're building a new one. And you'll be with us for another year here in yeah. our chapel. Yeah, and the Lord has provided us a new place. This is, this is really providential. It's right at Appleby Line in 407, which in addition to being a stone's throw from my home, which is nice, uh, is a great area with young families and a growing community, highly visible and accessible off the highways. It's truly the Lord's hand is all over it. I want to ask, uh, you know, with uh, Rhonda's graduation, I mean, she graduated from Osgood Hall right. as a lawyer, <laughs> right. and then within a few months, the Lord graduated her into heaven. Yeah. How are you doing, and how's your little boy doing? Well, we're doing well, by God's grace. I mean, yeah. it hasn't always been easy. There have been sad times and difficult times, but it gets easier as time goes on. And the Lord has made his grace known to us through people, through viewers of 100 Huntley Street who have faithfully prayed for us and sent us emails and cards. David, can I just say, yeah. every place I travel, people know of our mutual affection and they ask me, they say, so how is David Maines doing? And I assure them with this comment, and I believe this, it helped me through the loss of my wife. No one leaves this planet a moment early. Yeah. Jesus is still sovereignly in control over everything that happens. Sometimes we don't recognize his goodness as goodness. You know, you say, well, how is that possibly good? But he's always good and he's always in control. And we have coming up the healing atmosphere in the last five minutes of the hour. Uh, uh, Ray David, uh, tell me about your journey yeah. uh, into the priesthood. Right. And uh, your, I remember Rhonda saying to me one time, I'm in awe of Ray David as the other. In other words, when you stood, when you stand, you know, hmm. as, as a priest of the church, right. as a minister of the gospel, Rhonda told me, I'm in awe of Ray David. Yeah, that's the key. It's being a minister of the gospel. Talk about your journey. Sure. When Paul was, his apostleship was being challenged in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he didn't appeal to his certificates that were on the wall like a dentist's office or any of his letters. He said, the letters that commend my ministry are written on the hearts of my people. In other words, it's the gospel that's at work through us as ministers that commend our ministry and give us our power and strength in the Holy Spirit. Um, I left here and I went to Tyndale Seminary to do a master's degree, fully intending to become a Pentecostal pastor. And to my surprise, as much as to everyone's, uh, through a series of events and circumstances, I was drawn to the Anglican way of being a Christian. It's a faithful way. It's a historic way. 
It's a global way of being a Christian. Uh, there's a framework for, for suffering and for history and for all the things that were rich and vibrant in Christian life. And so I, I had Anglican professors. I said, when I grow up, I want to be like them. Uh, I discovered the strength and power of the English Reformation and its focus on the scriptures and, and word and sacrament being central to it. So it wasn't and just so Henry, I just Henry VIII. Of, no, no, Henry VIII was, uh, that was God's providence it arranging the dominoes. superfluous to what That's, really was happening. No, it was all about getting the gospel to the people in a language that was accessible to them. And the, the English church, Reformation the was refused, gospel for the people. You know, the, uh, wanted to stay in Latin, and That's the average right. person couldn't understand the That's gospel, right. of course. And David, our ministry is St. George's has, has really sought to recapture that beating heart of the English Reformation. You say, what was that really all about? I mean, people died for this stuff. So no one dies for external trappings, for the right liturgical color or the right appearance. What was at the heart of it? And at the heart of it was the belief that the gospel was for the people that God wanted his transforming message to get beyond the ivory tower, to get beyond the, the clergy, and to affect real change of conversion in the lives of everyday people. You know, uh, we have a little Anglican church building yeah. in Seeley's Bay, Ontario, just north of Kingston. We, Norma Jean and I live about five miles away from that. And uh, a lady in the community bought the building because the Anglicans closed it down. And there are probably 400 people in the area, at least, that have been christened in that building. And I, right. and I understand you're in charge for what's called the Ang Anglican Network for yes. planting new churches. That's right. That's will, right. will you send us a, an on-fire, true to the historical, biblical <laughs> understanding of the gospel? Would yeah. you send one of them to us Amen. in Seeley's Bay David, and I'll we'll make an you. arrangement on the other end to get Absolutely. that building reopened? We'll join together and pray that the great shepherd of the sheep would send an under-shepherd. Well, Someone what's needs happening? to feel that. Are, are you actually opening churches under we the are. Anglican Network banner? We are, David. We started off four years ago with two congregations. Yeah. Two. We now have 67 across Canada. Wow. It is a work Talk of the Lord. Talk about exponential growth. Yeah. And David, we, we deal with that humbly. It's entirely God's work through the, the preaching and the ministry of His Word. Uh, when you look at scripture, when you look around the world, when you look at the church historically, churches should grow. Yeah. When, they're, when they're operating out of the gospel, when they're preaching the gospel, they grow and they multiply. Instead um, of diminish, like, right. like has happened because, uh, you know, theological liberalism, if you will, that has crept into the, uh, the church in Canada and the U.S. Yeah. And the network is, is a, uh, uh, if you will, it's an initiative that came out of that desire to tie into the historical, I mean, I'm an ordained Pentecostal minister, yeah. and the first Bible college, first Pentecostal Bible college was by uh, Dr. That's J. Right. Eustace Purdy. I saw There's his a picture right. and graduated in the 1890s. It's on the wall at Wyc Wycliffe College in the yeah. University of Toronto. Yeah. He started, and he put the 39 articles theologically mm. under the, this new Pentecostal movement. Yeah. Wouldn't Pentecostals rejoice to know that they're actually all Anglicans? <laughs> <laughs> David, when, when we launched into this building of the Anglican Network in Canada, we had Reformation around Scripture in mind. Uh, you know, October 31st was Reformation Day. It was the anniversary of the yeah. day when Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses right. to the church door in uh, the Castle Church in Wittenberg, and it sparked the, the Reformation. Uh, the Reformation was not about churchy people being political. It was about the discovery that God mediates his revelation. He, he makes himself known through a book, through the Bible, that he safeguards holiness from generation to generation in the word. And so the fundamental question is, does the church measure the Bible and pick and choose which parts it wants? Or does the Bible measure the church? When you place God's word out front, Jesus Christ becomes clear and plain and obvious to the glory of God. The Holy Spirit is at work and that's when people are converted to Christ. And here's a couple from your congregation. I moved here about nine years ago and I um, needed to join a small group. Um, so I met Blair and his wife at church um, and uh, he, had, he had just started to get sick from this uh, liver Crohn's disease type thing. Um, and. Uh, you know, so we supported him through his illness and his family, and we prayed for prayed with them and and things like that. And um, and last year he was put on the donors list, uh, and I wasn't quite able to uh, step forward then uh, about a year ago because of just I was busy moving and stuff. But um, he got very sick in July, 
and um, uh, so I was thinking hmm, maybe I can maybe I can help out. Uh, so so he um, so we started the process and it turned out I was a match, and uh, so we went ahead uh, and um, I I you know donated seventy percent of my liver to my friend and. Uh, uh, it's it's been a great experience uh, being in church and having the church people support me uh, and help me with uh, you know just things that I need driving me around and cooking meals for me uh, so it's been a very rewarding experience during the whole time that I've been uh, I've been at st. George's I've been dealing with health problems uh, uh, Crohn's and, and PSC which is my liver problem that eventually led to a transplant um, and just one thing we weren't expecting uh, when we joined the church was the support um, that came along with it um, of a real church family. It's, it's been unbelievable and, and my wife and I have been moved to tears on many occasions. Just the, the, just the outpouring of support any time that I've had to deal with it, my illness and, and uh, you know, lost time and work and things like that. It just people have always been there to help us out. And uh, and yeah, and then and even with Joe, what he's what he's done for, for us um, by donating half of his liver, it's just been you know how do you I don't know how do you repay that? You you can't, and and it uh, it's 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 amazing, and it reminds me of of what Christ did for us as well. Um, you just can't repay it. So uh, it just kind of gives us a broader, gave me and my wife anyways, a broader sense of, of what Christ did for us. I've been pastor to both Joe and Blair now for over seven years, and I can assure you that in no way do they want any glory in this, that both of them have pulled back and said, this story is not about us. This story is about the glory of Jesus being made known and seen in our local church and beyond. Uh, that's really what happens. The gospel transforms us from the inside out, changing our affections, changing our hearts. Our behaviors then begin to change. And when our behaviors change, we begin to look more like Jesus. And how could someone look more like Jesus than Joe, who lays down his life for his friend? David, in this moment, we catch a glimpse of the very character and essence of God. Uh, yeah, <laughs> very unusual for me, but I kind of speechless. Thank you, Ray David.